you hear a song, I want you to just start moving your right hand in an up and down motion. You could strum on your belly, you could strum on the side of your pants, you could strum on your shirt, you could strum on your girlfriend or boyfriend. What's up my fellow troubadours? I've been getting many requests from you all out there in the community looking for help with your strumming. Strumming a guitar so that it feels natural and not mechanical and so that you don't have to think too much while you're doing it is what all guitarists are after and I want to help you get there. So my hope is that by the time you finish watching this video, you'll have the tools that you need to practice your strumming effectively and to be able to listen to a song and figure out how you could strum along in time, even be able to maybe pick up on the exact strumming pattern that you hear. And I'll be doing this all with real song examples to really help it sink in. This is going to be an ultimate guide to strumming and one that you could refer back to when you need some reinforcement. Before we get started, I hope that you will consider liking and subscribing. And for those who wish to support this channel, there are also links to my Patreon and other ways that you could support if you so choose. And as always, feel free to leave me your comments and suggestions. Enough business talk, let's get into it. If you take one thing out of this video, it's that your right hand is always moving in an up and down motion with the beat. Even if there are moments where we're breaking the strum to play single notes within a chord, right? Or there's no strum at all. We always want to think up and down. That up and down motion is what's going to give us that constant flow, that constant feel, whether we're making contact with the strings or not. To strum well, the right hand has to always be in an up and down motion in time with the beat. And you don't even need a guitar to practice this. When you hear a song, I want you to just start moving your right hand in an up and down motion. You could strum on your belly, you could strum on the side of your pants, you could strum on your shirt, you could strum on your girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever. Just get that right hand moving. I find it helps to think of your right hand almost as like a shaker or a hi-hat instrument in a drum kit. The good news here is that there really are only two main ways that our right hand has to move, in eighth notes and in sixteenth notes, okay? Eighth notes, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and sixteenth notes, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a just up and down, no matter what. One and two and three and four and when we're doing eighth notes, we're down on the one or the two on the number, we're up on the end. One and two and in sixteenth notes one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a we're down on the number right the down beats one and two e and a three e and and we're down on the and but on the e and the uh one e and uh we'll be playing up it sounds confusing but one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e they're essentially the same exact thing, just subdivided. One is faster than the other. We could be at the same tempo and play it in eighth notes or sixteenth notes. One and two and three. Eighth notes, sixteenth notes. Okay? We'll get back to this in more detail, but I want to cover that right from jump. So the only really difference is the speed of the right hand. If you can count, you can strum in time. All right, so let's get into our first basic strum. We already know if we're doing eighth notes, we're going to play down on the one, up on the and. So one and two and three and four and, right? And I'm just fingering, fingering a basic A chord. You can finger it like this, however you like. Now, but we're not going to play on every single up and down stroke. So we have to be able to Keep our hand moving up and down, but only play on the strokes that are needed. Any arrows that you see grayed out, we are not going to make contact with the strings. We're only going to make contact with the strings where the arrow is in black. Also, wherever you see the arrows grayed out, I also changed the note head to an X to also give you a visual cue not to play or not to make string contact on that. So if we were counting this, one, two, three, Four, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, 
down, up. Really quite simple. Down, down, up. Up, down, up. But our hand, if you just looked at our hand, it's just going to look like this the whole time. Down, down, up. Up, down, up, down. Down, up, up, down, up. Let's try it again, but this time we're going to try it with the metronome. One, two, three, four. Down, down, up. Up, down, up, down. Now let's say we needed to play that same pattern, but we needed to play it faster to fit the song that we were playing. Instead of down, down, up, up, down, up, we needed... Well, what we have to do is we have to play 16th note up and down strokes with our right hand. One E and two E and three E and four E and one E and... Ba, ba, ba. you to mute the strings like this and, and really exaggerate. Just keep an up and down motion and make contact so that you hear the bop, 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 bop. I don't want you to think up and down, oh, it's a downstroke, it's an upstroke. When we do, once we get into the 16th notes, it's just about getting that feel locked in. It's all about where we're making contact with the strings and where we aren't. So, when we move in 16 notes, is we can even pick up different little pieces here and there just to dress it up. We can feel the groove intuitively and change it a little bit. kind of meander away and use little variations because as long as you keep this going you really can't go wrong with it. Now let's take a look at a song that has a very definitive strumming pattern, A Horse With No Name by America. It's perfect for a lesson like this. It's using an eighth note pattern but with a shuffle feel which basically just means instead of playing straight eighth notes it's the second one's a little shorter. Think of bum, ba dum, ba dum, ba dum. Okay? You've heard that sound before. I'm going to go over the basic strumming pattern, but I'm also going to show you some kind of right handed muting techniques you could use to make it feel a little bit more bouncy, if you will. The chords really simple are just E minor, and this is. Uh, D6 add 9 or D6 slash 9 over an F sharp. Don't let the name confuse you. This is the chord fingering. Uh, e string, second finger, second fret. G string, third finger, second fret. So E minor, D6 slash 9. Now, let's bring up that chart. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, up, down, up, Now, a little trick you can use with this to give that song the feel that it has, right? What you're doing is you're using palm mutes on the right hand on the down strokes and letting the up strokes ring out. So, palm mute. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Up, down, up, down, up. So on those down strokes, we let our palm kind of rest on the side. 
especially in the second half of the phrase. Right there. Right there. On the Another thing to note is in that second measure, if you look at the muted downstroke, the one that I that I showed that you're not supposed to play, right? Well, your hand's got to go back down anyway. It's kind of okay if you mute and let the pick rub against the strings. It'll help give it a more natural groove. And then sometimes you could raise the pick off completely. The, the good thing about knowing how to strum naturally is you don't have to really overthink it. See, I'm letting the pick kind of touch. So let's go over it one more time at a slow tempo and I'll just play it various different ways. The next song up is by Jason Mraz, I'm Yours, the chords, B, F sharp, G sharp minor, E, okay? The feel is like this, right? E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a one, E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a... On the down, I'm going to come down with my thumb, one, E, kind of up with the flesh of my first finger, one, E, the next down, I'm coming kind of down with the top of my nails, one, E, N, up, and then up again with the flesh of my first finger. The up is always going to be with the flesh of the first finger for this song. A shuffly feel as well. There are 16 notes, one E and a two E, but it has a boom, a boom kind of feel to it, right? And the only thing we're not strumming technically is the E of the first pattern of 16 notes. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. time slow down down up down up down up down down up down up down up down down up down up down 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 up down up down up down down up down up down down up down up down up down down up 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 now there is that constant up and down motion you don't see it as much in a song like this because I'm using my thumb and my finger so there's not that you're not gonna see it but down there is a small upstroke that you're not seeing. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's that slight upstroke, right? Another point with this song is because we're using the thumb and the first finger to kind of do the strumming, I'm not playing the whole chord. When I play with the thumb, I'm really only playing the bottom three notes of each chord. bottom top two to three notes of this of each chord for a song like this but once you get that feel it really will be 
intuitive to you. All right, let's talk about songs that are in three, three, four, or six, eight. They both are three. It's either one, two, three, two, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five, six. It's just a matter of how we subdivide it, kind of like with eighth notes and sixteenth notes. How can we tell if a song is in three? Well, the really good trick you could use is think of the Blue Danube. Do, 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 do. It's a waltz. Three, four time, or three is considered a waltz time. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Three. Picture like if you could waltz to it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Another thing to know about three, four, or six, eight is the down or like the accent is always on the first set of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Just like that waltz. You take that step. One, two, three. One, two, three. I'm waltzing on the internet like a fool. One, two, three. But I'll do it for you. Because I want you to get this point. If we're in six, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, then it's on one and four. But again, it's just patterns of three. You can just count it one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't matter. One, two, three. Strumming in three, again, we're going to do up and down motion. One, two, three, one, and two, and three, and one, two, three, one, two. So if I'm going to just play a D chord, let's say. One, two, three, 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 one. Up, down, 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 down, up, down, up, down, down. You can do different patterns. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Up, down, up, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Again, we don't have to make contact with the strings. See? Usually the first set of three will have a strum. examples of three, four, or six, eight time. You could think of it either way. So now when you listen to a piece of music, I want you to just think, hmm, this is counted in fours, twos, fours, you know, or threes, three or six, eight. Is it one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, or is it one, two, three, one, two, three? That will determine how you go about strumming to the song and how you feel the song. And once you could do that, Once you could feel it and get your wrist moving with it and know where the accents are, two, three, one, two, three, one, you can strum along with just about anything. I hope that this video helped you understand strumming a little bit more. Feel free to leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Give me some suggestions. I'm Frank Persico, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.